In this lesson, we're going to go through graphing polynomials using Descartes' rule of signs, the rational zero theorem, uh, synthetic division, and we're going to put all these components together to help get a pretty good sketch of this uh, graph here. So we're going to go through two examples. The first example, we've got y equals x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x plus 8. The first thing I would do is I'd analyze it and say, well, can I factor this? Well, there's four terms, you know, we could try factoring by grouping, but I can see that this is not going to factor uh, by using the grouping method. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to the rational zero theorem, or often referred to as the rational root theorem. And to use the rational root theorem, you take all the factors of the constant divided by all the factors of this leading coefficient. In this case, it's one. So all the factors of eight are going to be what? Uh, plus or minus one, two, four, and eight divided by all the factors of the leading coefficient, which in this case are plus or minus one. So it could be one over one, two over one, four over one, eight over one, positive or negative. And so what this does is it kind of narrows down the possible zeros, those x-intercepts for us. The next thing we want to do is see if we can narrow it down further by using Descartes' rule of signs. So the way Descartes' rule of signs works is we look at the sign changes, like positive to negative or negative to positive, that's considered a sign change. So here we have a positive x cubed to negative 5x squared, that's one sign change. Negative 5x squared to positive 2x, that's another sign change. Positive 2x to positive 8, that's, that, those are both positive, it didn't change signs. So we have a maximum of two positive zeros, meaning like it's crossing to the right of the y-axis, so positive zeros. So you can make what they call a PNI chart, positive, negative, imaginary, and we're going to have a maximum of two positives. Now how about the negatives? Well, what you can do is you can replace x with negative x. Okay, wherever you see x, you replace with negative x, and then what we're going to do is we're going to count the sign changes that occur when we simplify this. So this comes out to negative x cubed, negative 5x squared, negative 2x, and positive 8. You want to make sure you do your order of operations, the exponents, before you do the multiplication. Now when we look at the sign changes, negative to negative, negative to negative, negative to positive, that is a sign change. So that means there's a maximum of one negative. And if you add across here, 2 plus 1 plus 0 adds up to 3, which is our degree of our polynomial. So, you, so that's a one scenario. Now remember how we said there was a maximum of 2? It could be less than that by an even amount. So you can subtract 2, 4, 6, 8, like that. So if I subtract 2 from 2, that could be 0 positives, okay, 1 negative, and 2 imaginary. Now when the coefficients are real numbers, see 1, negative 5, 2, 8, you don't see like 2i or 5i. If all the coefficients are real numbers, then the imaginary zeros are going to come as conjugate pairs, like uh, a plus bi, like 3 plus 2i, 3 minus 2i. They come together as conjugate pairs. Now what about for the negatives? Could I take two away from one? Well, no, because then that would be a negative number of zeros. You can't have a negative number of zeros. So these are the only possibilities for our zeros. Now you're saying, Mario, how does that help us? Well, when I go to check these possible zeros here that we found with the rational root theorem or rational zero theorem, I know that there's exactly one negative. If I look for the positives and it's this scenario here, I might be looking all day and not find them because there might be none. So to, to be strategic about this, I might want to go after the negative uh, zero. So for example, let's go ahead and uh, do our synthetic division now. We want to set it up so that we have uh, 1, negative 5, 2, and 8. 1, negative 5, 2, and 8. Okay, so these are the coefficients. Remember, if you skip over any terms, like if it went from x cubed to x, you'd have to put a placeholder of zero there. But we've got all the terms. And then let's test out, say for example, uh, negative 2. Okay, so if we bring down that first term, we multiply on the diagonal, and we add straight down. We multiply on the diagonal, we add straight down, we multiply on the diagonal, we add straight down, and you see how this last number is not zero? That means that negative two is not a zero, right? So let's try uh, negative one. Okay, that's one of our possible rational zeros. Start again with our coefficients, which are coming right here, one, negative five, two, and eight. Let's drop down that first number, multiply on the diagonal, add straight down, multiply on the diagonal, add straight down, multiply on the diagonal, add straight down. Here we are getting zero remainder, which means that negative one is a zero. 
So what that means graphically here is it's going to cross the x-axis right here at negative 1. That's our 0. But now when you do the synthetic division, it takes you down 1 degree. So it takes you from x cubed down to x squared. And we can factor this further now. This is going to be x minus 4, x minus 2, and then this was like x plus 1. So when you set this to 0, you get negative 1. When you set this to 0, you get 4. So it's crossing here at 4. And when you set this factor to 0, you get 2. So now we found our zeros. The only thing we need to do now is analyze, is the graph going up to the right or down to the right? Well, the leading coefficient is positive, so we know it's going up to the right. The degree is odd, so it's going the opposite way to the left. If it was an even degree, they're either going to both be going up or both going down. They're going the same direction. But odd, we go opposite. And it looks like that the zeros all occurred once. We didn't have any multiplicities. It's not like a negative 1 occurred twice or three times. They all just occurred once. So that means that when it crosses at these points, it's going to cross just like a line. If it, it was a multiplicity of 2, it would bounce. If it was a multiplicity of 3, it would have that x cubed shape. But these are all occurring once, so it's going to have this where it goes straight through at each of those x-intercepts. Now, the only thing that's missing here we could plot some points in between these zeros to get an idea about how high it goes or how low it goes to get a better sketch. But overall, this is a pretty good sketch of our graph, and you got it. Let's look at number two where we get into another example. Okay, before we jump into example number two, if you're new to the channel and we're meeting for the first time, my name is Mario of Mario's Math Tutoring. I'm a full-time math tutor. I work with students every day. And what I do is I take what works the best and the quickest and the easiest for students and I take them and I, I try to condense it down and put it into these lessons so you can benefit from my tutoring as well. So I, my goal for the channel is to make learning math less stressful so you can raise your grade, pass your class, and go on to pursue your dreams. If that's something you're interested in, check out more math videos on my Mario's Math Tutoring YouTube channel. But let's jump into number two and get some more practice with these problems. The first thing I would do is I'd see if I can factor this. You know, I would try to factor it. If it can't factor it, then I would go to the rational zero theorem. And so in this case, let's just go ahead and do the rational zero theorem since that's what we're practicing. We take all the factors of the constant divided by all the factors of the leading coefficient. So that would be plus or minus 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, uh, what is that, 10, 20, and 40, all divided by plus or minus the factors of the leading coefficient, which would be 1 or 2. So for example, it could be like 1 half or 5 halves, you know, positive or negative, any of those combinations, any numerator divided by uh, any of these denominators here. So then let's go to Descartes' rule of science to see if we can narrow down, because there's a lot of zeros here, right? So what I would do is I would uh, make a PNI chart, positive, negative, imaginary, to get an idea what the possibilities are. So we want to check the sign changes. We've got negative to negative, negative to negative, negative to negative. So it doesn't change signs at all. So there's going to be a maximum of zero positive zeros, meaning when we go to graph this, it's not going to cross over here to the right of the y-axis. There's no positive zeros. If you want to find the negative ones, what you do is you replace x with negative x. Okay, so wherever you see x, you're replacing that with negative x. And then what you want to do is you want to simplify that down and so this gives you negative x cubed times negative 2 is positive 2x cubed. This gives you x squared. That's negative 18x squared. This is positive 48x. This is negative 40. So now we have one sign change, two sign changes, three sign changes. So that means there's a maximum of three negatives. And you can see the 0 plus 3 plus 0 is 3. It's a third degree. Or, remember, these can always go down by an even amount, like 2, 4, 6, 8. You can subtract 2, 4, 6, 8, an even number. So it could be 0, 1, and 2 imaginary. Again, remember the imaginary come as conjugate pairs if the coefficients are real. You don't see any i's up there. We can't subtract 2. Again, that would put us into the negative territory. You can't have a negative number of zeros. This one's already at 0. We can't go lower than that. So these are our only possibilities. So you say, well, how does that help us, Mario? Well, we know there's no positives, so that already cuts our work down by half, right? We don't have to check any of the positive ones, just the negative ones. Okay, so great. So let's go ahead and uh, do our synthetic division. Let's pick a combination of a numerator and denominator. We're going to make it negative. Let's go for negative 2. Okay, so we're going to take our coefficients. We have negative 2, negative 18, negative 48, and negative 40. 
We're not missing in any terms, so we don't have to put any zeros for placeholders. We just have to drop down that first term, multiply in the diagonal, add straight down, multiply in the diagonal, add straight down, multiply in the diagonal, add straight down. Now it came out to zero, so that tells us that negative two is a zero. It also brings us down from x cubed to x squared. And so now we can see if we can factor this a little bit further here. So I factored out a negative two, that was our greatest common factor, and we can factor this a little bit further, x plus five times x plus two gives us back this, and if we set these factors to zero, we get negative five, negative two, and we also had negative two. Now this is interesting, see how we have negative two twice? That's what we call a multiplicity, so it's crossing at negative two, that's a multiplicity of two, it's gonna have a, a shape, like a parabola shape, either like this or like this, when it, uh, touches that point, it's also gonna cross that negative five, three, four, five, right here. The leading coefficient's negative, that means it's gonna be going down to the right. It's an odd degree, that's three, it's gonna be going up to the left, the opposite direction. At negative five, this only occurred once, so that means it's gonna go through here just like a line. But here at negative two, we said that was multiplicity of two, so it's gonna have that x squared or parabola shape at that point. The only thing that's missing here is we could pick some points, you know, additional points to get a better idea about how low this goes or how high it goes. But this is a pretty good sketch of our graph given the fact that, you know, we weren't necessarily able to factor it initially and uh, we had to use a synthetic division and the rational root theorem, Descartes rule of signs. If you want to see more examples like this, follow me over to that video right there and we can dive into some more practice.